Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Sampson, and I'm a preventive conservator at the National Archives. Um, again, I am not a historian. Um, at the National Archives, we're custodian of a thousand years of history. And amongst the 12 and a half million records we hold is a, a vast and somewhat un underexplored collection of, of historic wax seals. Um, in more recent years, though, uh, a succession of projects have been undertaken by uh, the department I work in, Collection Care, in collaboration with our own heritage scientists, uh, record specialists, and with uh, some external partners, all exploring the condition, the materiality, and the preservation of seals with a view to improving both uh, understanding and access. And amongst these projects have been uh, the Wax Seals in Context project, uh, where seals pendant to the 1301 Baron's letter to the Pope underwent technical analysis to establish historical and compositional details, contributing to a better understanding of their manufacture and meaning. Um, the Seal Repair and Consolidation project, uh, Keep It Together, which identified common issues with conditions such as breakage, uh, fragmentation and delamination. Um, and it also researched historical and current methods of repair and consolidation uh, with the aim of informing a new approach to conservation treatment of seals at the National Archives. Um, we have also fulfilled or are fulfilling um, a research advisory role in the project archives, unlocking the ancient beeswax record uh, which brings together an international multidisciplinary team of sigillographers, historians, chemists, biologists, uh, palynologists and archaeologists to investigate the potential of historic beeswax samples to serve as a biomolecular archive. And we have the ongoing lead seals project, um, which is examining the condition of lead paper belay, um, surveying their condition determining their ongoing chemical stability by analyzing a, a historic consolidant coating and exploring sympathetic rehousing options. And alongside all of these uh, is my own project, which is called PRE 23, uh, the aim of which has been to catalog and digitize um, a collection of seal molds. And to give you some background about this piece of work, uh, the collection care department at TNA holds this collection um, it's a historic collection of plaster and silicon rubber molds, which have been taken from our own wax seals. There are around 8,000 items in it, and it's believed to be the largest collection of its type in the UK. Um, the molds date from the late 19th century onward and were manufactured in order to produce replicas, which could then be studied, photographed and handled by many researchers with no risk to the original document. Um, the collection has been used extensively, but moulding and casting have fallen out of practice. This happened around the early 2000s, and information about the collection's manufacture use and it, its content was very sparse, held mainly as sets of incomplete handwritten notes, and also in the memories of the people who had worked on it. Um, and in 2013, these uh, colleagues started to retire, so it became apparent that if the collection was to retain uh, its significance and to be utilised in the future, then something needed to be done. And so I was tasked with scoping a data gathering project, the aim of which would be to create um, a useful functional record of the resource uh, for those that are interested in SEALS research. Um, as a conservator, my interest in SEALS up to this point have been limited to the materiality. Um, their context and their meaning were not something of which I had very much knowledge. So undertaking this piece of work, I wanted to be certain that any data we captured um, would be useful. And for this reason, I sought expert advice from records specialists in our collections, expertise and engagement departments um, and colleagues from our cataloging team. And together, uh, we formed a working group to look at what information to capture. So how to draw a connection between the mould and its parent document, how to ensure that it would relate to our existing research resources, such as the SEALS card index, and how to produce something that would be compatible with, with our online catalog discovery, um, should we find an approach that meant we could marry those, those two things together at some point. So with a, a database established, the cataloging project began and the input work was undertaken by a team of four vol volunteers who worked from the handwritten notes um, and they transcribed key information about the seal. 
Um, so as you can see here, so things like mold manufacturer number, the seal type, the owner, the date of seal, uh, wax color, size, parent document reference, and any sort of additional information like um, membrane numbers or, or legends. Um, as the work progressed, lots of previous cataloging attempts sort of came to light. So these were also absorbed into the database, which was getting bigger by the day, uh, making it the most comprehensive set of data on the seal mold collection to date. And once data retrieval was completed, I then had to think about what we were going to do with all of this information in the molds. Um, and given the distinctly visual nature of seals, the thing that I kept coming back to repeatedly um, was to try and digitize them in some way and to make them available in our catalog in discovery. So there were two problems that I had then to resolve. Uh, firstly, how to go about imaging the molds, what method would be most appropriate? And secondly, digitization of objects and presentation and discovery had never been attempted before. So could, could this actually even be realized? Um, I was very lucky when setting this project up that I had so much expertise available to me in-house. So I worked with colleagues from our Reapographics team um, who helped me to investigate imaging methods. Um, also with colleagues from Digital Archiving um, who helped me to determine how best to capture metadata how to ensure compatibility with the existing processes and how to secure organizational support going forward. Um, photography, 3D scanning and reflectance transformation imaging were all explored, but ultimately rejected as either um, time consuming or resource intensive or requiring a level of expertise that we just, we didn't have. And in the end, imaging on a simple flatbed scanner proved to be highly effective. And this is the end result. Um, the best result with the scanner was achieved when the molds were converted to grayscale. Uh, they were also scanned at 800 dpi, which is um, a significantly higher resolution than um, the standard 400 dpi that's required of flat documents. And as the image has to be compressed for display and discovery, um, this ensured that it retains a very high degree of um, image quality. Um, we've done a bit of post-production, so the images have been retouched in Photoshop. Um, since the mould is essentially a negative impression, it needed to be inverted. Uh, brightness and contrast were adjusted to give the best uh, read of the image, and any discoloration that interfered with the image was, uh, was removed. Um, now that the imaging and metadata formats were confirmed, the next problem to solve uh, became how to go about delivering this output of 8,000 images and lines of metadata. And having worked with volunteers to build the database, it seemed logical to continue working with them on the digitization. It helped us to keep costs low because you know there was not a lot of money for this project. Um, but it also, I think most importantly, it ensured that we had the time and the space to guarantee that the work was of very good quality. Um, and it was also um, the first ever digitization project that's been undertaken by volunteers at the National Archives. Um, so we hired a team of seven people who have undertaken all of the scanning so far, retouching the metadata creation and the quality assurance that are essential to the process for this project. And our first batch of seals, um, of images, sorry, went live in July 2016, uh, sorry, 2017. That was uh, about 600 images. And since then we have scanned over 7,000 more. Um, and at present there are about five and a half thousand, slightly more than five and a half thousand images available in Discovery. And we are adding to that all of the time. So what does PRO23 offer to the researcher? Um, from my perspective, it's uh, a unique collection of digital uh, images of seals. Each mold is described in its own catalog entry and providing information on the original impression. All of the terms used are fully searchable and integrate with TNA's existing seal research resources, such as the seals research guide, which has subsequently been updated to include information about the digitization process and also some historic background about the um, mold collection. Um, all metadata is checked thoroughly, um, so we have a, a two-stage uh, quality assurance process for the metadata um, because we want to make accuracy, you know, accuracy is at the centre of what we do. Um, where there's doubt about the provenance of a seal or some information is missing, 
we look for the answers in, in resources such as the card index, or we will eventually refer to the original document. Um, and if a detail such as the name of the owner of the seal is still unclear, then we work very closely with Dr. Paul Driver, whose specialist knowledge of paleography, of the record types, um, form, formats and content um, helped us successfully resolve some of these queries. I mean, to be honest, most of them. Um, the PRO 23 catalogue entry also provides a hyperlink directly to the parent document entry. So should a reader wish to access the original document, they can do so very easily. Um, alongside the data is a high resolution image, which can be expanded and uh, allow the viewer to look at small details such as text or heraldic devices. And the images can also be um, downloaded as a PDF. So as well as demonstrating the breadth and variety of our wax seals collection, PRO23 gives the National Archives and its user a large stock of seal images to examine. It's web-based, so, um, so it's globally accessible, which is handy these days. Um, it can assist researchers in making new identifications or confirming ideas. And it's also a resource of images for those interested in things like architecture, heraldry, fashion, weapons and armor, and many other things besides. And it's also worth noting that in some cases, the mold is now the, the only example, the only surviving evidence of the seal. So what next? Um, like many other projects, PRO 23 was nearing completion and then it was rather abruptly interrupted by COVID-19. Um, and lockdown meant that our on-site volunteers were not able to attend anymore. And I wanted to find a way to, to keep my team, to keep them engaged and to um, you know, sort of retain them and, and want them, you know, I wanted them to come back when we were able to return to site. Um, so this turn of events really provided the opportunity to expand on an idea that Paul Dreiber and I have been discussing for some time, um, which was that we wanted to create a searchable version of the SEALS card index by transcribing its contents. Um, and the transcription would include things that we weren't able to include in PRO 23. So um, the description of the device, um, any legend, alternative impressions, um, comments on joining mechanisms and condition and things like that. Um, as I've mentioned for PRO 23, the index has been an invaluable resource in verifying data. The cards, which you can view um, when the office is open in paper format in the map room or as a digital image on discovery in QFA1, um, give detailed descriptions of approximately 30,000 seals from our collections. However, the volunteers found it um, quite difficult and time consuming to use. It's, um, it's not searchable at the moment. And the way that it's presented in discovery means that the user has to have a sense of what they're looking for and how, how the cards are arranged. Um, and then they have to scroll through hundreds of cards until they find the image that they're looking for. So Paul and I had already established a pilot to identify the information we wanted to capture and to test the feasibility of the project. So we were able to roll this out as a remote project pretty much straight away. Um, and since the index, um, the card index is available online, transcription was something that volunteers could undertake independently and at their own speed and with, with very little need for support from us. And um, what you can see on the screen here is just an example of the sort of the breadth of the data that we um, are trying to capture. Um, we're calling this piece of work Searchable Seals, um, and it's very much in its early stages, but it has a, attracted a lot of interest and support at the National Archives. Uh, in, in collaboration with our colleague, Dr. Lucia Pereira Pardo, we've expanded the brief of the project to investigate the applicability of handwritten text recognition software um, and work hopefully with an MSc Data Science for Cultural Heritage student from UCL who will aim to automatically transcribe the index by creating, um, testing and optimizing HTR models. And then the manual transcriptions um, already provided by our volunteers can then be used to train and refine the model. And the automatically generated transcripts can be edited, exported and uploaded into discovery to um, enrich existing catalog entries. So um, to provide additional information um, to help describe original documents. 
So Searchable Seals has grown very organically um, out of PRA 23 and preservation of seals at the National Archives continues to generate um, interesting and innovative projects like PRA 23 and the other projects I've mentioned. Um, they bring skilled individuals together uh, to work collaborati collaboratively sorry, on improved access to the collection through the application of emerging ideas and technologies and each whether a, it's a high level research project or a practical investigation at studio level um, is an entry point into our vast seals collection. And they allow the National Archives to take a more holistic approach to the preservation of and the access to uh, the historic wax seals in our care. Thank you very much.